So in terms of business, it's great. It fosters that engagement. It puts your product out there. And how he has transformed not only the social media space for men and men being content creators in this space. Are you willing to listen to the rhetoric that's being put out on social media and immediately believe it? Or are you choosing to say, okay, I hear this, but use a little bit of discretion and self-awareness and do the work and research it yourself. The indirect messages that she is giving off by the content that she's actually shooting. Like for instance, she'll have her kid eating a banana. And now any sensible person in their mind is thinking, wait a minute, boyfriend of four years, Apple, iPhone 15, there's a lot of crooks and con artists in the guise of coaches and therapists and all of this. And people forget that social media a lot of the time is a highlight reel. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is me, it is Katya Omalela. Thank you so much for being here. As always, thank you for choosing me over and over again. Today we are doing a Candid with Cat, but, but, today's Candid with Cat is a little bit more on the serious side because that's why I got my tea. That's why I got my tea. That's why I got my tea because we need to talk about this. And I think it's so important for us to have these discussions, especially as you can tell with the title down below, we're going to be talking about social media. Is it toxic or is it not? Is there advantages to having social media and are there disadvantages to having social media? And as you know, as always, I always go onto my Instagram and I say to you guys, let me know your thoughts because that's the reason why these videos videos happen. These videos happen when you guys put in your input along with mine. I also think about some things and I throw in my two cents in there as well. But I really felt like it is so important for us to have a conversation about social media and the impacts of social media on our society as a whole. Now I'm going to break it down. Okay. I'm going to go through some of your comments as well. There were quite a few of them. They are very, very much similar to some of the comments that I wrote down in my little notepad on my phone, but I think it is so important for us to have this conversation. Now I'm going to put in clips here and there that are going to help encourage this conversation or help show what is currently happening in social media today, right now. Okay, so thank you very much for being here. Let's get started. Let's get into the video. Without even going any further, I'm going to talk about social media from a social media content creator perspective. I create a lot of content. I create a lot of content for YouTube. I create a lot of content on Instagram, but I also create a lot of content for my business, for my life coaching business as well. So I coach, I do uh, personal coaching sessions, I do group speaking engagements, that kind of thing. And I also have workbooks and things like that to help with mental development and mental health and self-development. So I use social media a lot. I consume it a lot because it helps inform some of the things that I discuss on my channel, on different um, segments in my videos and things like that. So it is really, really important for me to consume social media a little bit so that that it informs the direction that I take with my work and with my social media content creation, right? So for me, I had to break it down a little bit and talk about the impacts that social media has on society from different perspectives. Now, I'm going to definitely go into your comments, but I want to raise mine a little bit first so that we can create some sort of conversation and engagement. Now, if this is something that you consume a lot, if you are on social media, on TikTok, on Instagram, and on YouTube quite a lot, I think this video will become a little bit more informative, and I think it's something that you should share with other people. Now, social media from a perspective 
perspective of business, I think it is phenomenal. Social media is a great way to make people feel connected. It's a great way for people to feel a sense of inclusion, for people to find work or find businesses or also find clientele. So for somebody who is a coach, in my perspective, it's great for me to reach out onto social media by creating ads, by marketing, by advertising my business. And that's what a lot of people are doing. That's what a lot of companies are doing. That's what a lot of individual sole owners, proprietors are doing as well to create and foster some kind of business engagement, marketing, advertising when it comes to their businesses. And I think social media in this perspective is fantastic. It's phenomenal because it creates the word. It makes it move a lot quicker. Imagine influencers, right? If you think about all the businesses that influencers work with in terms of putting their brand out there, uh, marketing new products. Let me, let, me, let me give you an example. We have a lot of social media content creators that market beauty products. And listen, when we get to talking about the toxic aspects of the beauty standards, especially when it comes to social media, that's a conversation all on its own. But what brands have started to do is realize the power that influencers have, especially when it comes to social media and marketing their products. This is a Maybelline Lifter Gloss. I use this. I love it. I use it all the time. I'm a gloss hun. I've got it on right now. That's why I said my name to me. I got it on right now. But if I can tell you how many social media campaigns that I have seen revolving around influencers that are marketing this particular product, this is one of the reasons why I picked it up. And I picked it up and I realized that, oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. I love it. And because of social media, I found out about this. So in terms of business, it's great. It fosters that engagement. It puts your product out there. You use people like your Kateos and your Naledis, Pemelos, uh, listen, Paelos. You use all these people that have great influential traction where they engage with people that watch them to market your product and because of that i mean hello somebody okay let's talk about sabelo the creator okay he's a south african content creator he's an influencer absolutely by right because of what he does on social media and how he has transformed not only the social media space for men and men being content creators in this space, but how he has marketed and very effectively the brands that he has worked with and their products. So it's really great social media in that aspect. Social media is also fantastic when it comes to news and current affairs and getting onto news very quickly. As somebody who hardly ever watches TV unless I am streaming something, I consume my news on social media. I consume my news via my phone. So there's social media, current affairs, apps and uh, TikTok accounts and Instagram accounts with 
News 24s and BBC News and Al Jazeera, they have marketed themselves by putting themselves into social media to disseminate current affairs, to disseminate news and all of this. And it is a great way for people like us who are constantly on social media for work and for personal gain, to be honest, to find news much more quicker. I realize over the years that I consume news a lot quicker via social media content platforms. You know what I'm saying? So I will watch social media content creators like Zetu, for instance, who is on TikTok, and she is fantastic. I love how she reports news. She reports what's currently happening in the country. South Africa has taken Israel to the International Court of Justice, accusing Israel of committing genocidal acts against Gaza. And we have all seen on every corner of the internet that is exactly what it is. Can I also just say that our legal team as South Africans is absolutely killing it. This meme is so funny, but it's absolutely spot on. She got her PhD in Cantology, where her dissertation had a focus on mother logical studies from the University of Servington. Now, she does also report other things, but a lot of the time she reports a lot of current affairs and things that are happening in the country. And I feel like she is a great example of how social media and content creators can actually disseminate current news and current affairs. Of course, with things like this, you also have to take them with a pinch of salt. You have to say, okay, if I'm going to be watching Zetu and I'm watching and listening to what she's saying and how she is uh, explaining something that is currently happening, like with us, we are in voting year, so we're going to be voting in the next month and she talks a lot about political parties. She talks a lot about current affairs and what's happening. You have to use a little bit of discretion when you're watching social media content creators that are talking about current affairs. Because if you're not sure about what she's saying or there might be something that you disagree with and things like that, then you have to go on over to the news outlets that are disseminating current affairs daily and follow it up on there right but it's great because then you can follow content creators that you love that disseminate this current affairs information as well so it's really great because it moves very quickly because of social media everything moves like this everything moves like lightning right and that's the great part of social media this is fantastic Businesses can market themselves. Current affairs moves very, very quickly, disseminated very, very quickly. Like recently, there was an earthquake. Recently, there was a warning of a potential tsunami in the Japan area and all of this. I found all of this out on social media. As much as I watch the news and I drive to work and I listen to the news and all of that, but it moved much more quicker for me because of social media. So social media has wonderful prospects, but it all depends on self-awareness, right? It all depends on what you are willing to believe, what are you willing to think on, what are you willing to, are you willing to listen to the rhetoric that's being put out on social media and immediately believe it? Or are you choosing to say, okay, I hear this, but use a little bit of discretion and self-awareness and do the work and research it yourself if it doesn't come across as mm. now the downside of social media i think is the one that is more prominent for so many people and for me being in the influential space i can see a lot of social media content creators that are disseminating information that might not be correct, that might be conspiracy theories, that might even be fake news. And people immediately run with something like that and not even sure about the details and whether they are accurate or not. And I feel like for me, this is where social media gets really, really, really tricky. We're going to get into the parts where social media and how it impacts society in terms of interpersonal relationships, in terms of friendships, relationships, in terms of mental health, mental health awareness, in terms of social inclusion, in terms of all those kinds of things a little bit later on because that is what most people gravitated towards when I raised this question on my Instagram. But before we get to that, I want to talk about a little bit about how dangerous social media can be. Hang on. 
so we can talk about how dangerous social media can be in the space of disseminating fake news in the space of disseminating conspiracy theories because then you have people who succumb easily to peer pressure who do not have a sense of self-awareness to say mm, i don't know because not everybody in society is going to question everything that is brought forth to them by social media so sometimes somebody will hear something about oh my gosh this and this pasta is doing this and this and blah 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 and immediately believe it as opposed to is it actually communicated about in the news or am i just listening to this person who's spoken about how this particular pasta is into witchcraft and all of this blah 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 am i going to immediately believe that or am i going to use a little bit of discretion am i going to be rational about this and not come with a decision from an irrational perspective right so sometimes a lot of the time that's when social media becomes really really dangerous to consume because it could be the spreading of false information misinformation and people running with that and it becomes a wildfire a wildfire one of the things that also worries me a lot especially when it comes to social media in the content creation space are mummy vloggers now i love mummy vloggers i appreciate them i love them and i think that they are doing wonderful things in terms of connecting with mummy vloggers connecting with um people who might be going through certain or similar experiences to them and all of this but what this opens up to the world is images of their children online showing images of their children online and this opens up a very dark 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 side of social media like the dark web of social media where people who are into children like that I'll write the word it starts with a p the people are into children like that take images of these children that are online and put them on websites and on web spaces where people are using all of that kind of media and content for very very negative purposes so i tend to be very very careful with consuming mummy content i'm not a mummy myself so i don't really have specific need to consume mummy content but i tend to worry a little bit about how now when you are showing images of your children online and some parents tend to be a little bit reckless with this where they will show the school the badges of their children maybe on their uniform and they will show the school that this kid uh uh uh, uh goes to and this could open up very very serious and dangerous doors to people being able to know access to that kind of information and potentially something happening that could be detrimental to that family right or to that child so there's certain aspects of social media i'm not dogging on mummy content creators because i think they're doing wonderful things for making being a mummy and the struggles that mummies go through and all of that more relatable uh, it's easier to understand and um feel safer when you don't feel like you're alone especially as a mummy vlogger or a mummy generally and i think that is fantastic that is the good side of social media in terms of the mummy vlogging perspective but the negative side of that is exposing young children to this kind of life and this kind of um dangers and dangerous people to society i think it goes a little bit further on when you look at how some mummy vloggers actually use their children maliciously to make money off of their children not all of them do this i mean if a brand is going to say to you we are nestle okay and we know that you have a toddler and we would like you to promote this kind of milk and all of this of course the toddler is going to be in this campaign this is why the campaign is happening the campaign is not necessarily for the mummy it's for the toddler right but some parents go overboard with this whereby each and every single content piece each and every single one so the mummy sort of doesn't have an identity 
in the social media content creation space, it's all about the kid. There is a content creator in the States. I haven't really seen this much in the South African space. I feel like the mummy vloggers that I've seen in the South African space are well aware of things like this and the content doesn't only center literally 99.3%. 9% around their kids, but it might center around their home and being a mom in their home and also themselves a little bit and they integrate being a mommy vlogger into that and that's perfectly fine. However, there is a content creator by the name of Jacqueline. She's in the States and she's got a young daughter, a young kid by the name of Ren and this kid the content that this mommy shoots of her child, this is a toddler, this kid is probably like two or three, the content that this mommy shoots of her child, the, 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 the behind the scenes messages, right? The, the indirect messages that she is giving off by the content that she's actually shooting. Like for instance, she'll have her kid eating a banana. Do you get it? Do you get it? Or she'll have a kid squeezing out frozen honey from a tube. Do you get it? Do you see what this is? Or she'll have her kid doing outfits of the day, pictures with little short skirts. Do you get it? Do you see how at that point social media is dangerous for children? You know what I'm saying? And this is, this is when you see the darker side of social media, right? You see the darker side where it could put people in dangerous situations. Maybe for instance, you're having fun and you're at a bar and all of this and you're a social media content creator and a guy comes up to you and does something or says something and you as a social media content creator use that as a opportunity to release a video on your content creation space about what this guy has done but then you 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 throw in a little bit more information like you dox this person and you show maybe this person was just trying to say hello to you but you sprinkle in a little bit more sprinkle sprinkle of things that actually didn't even happen and in the in the same social media content piece that content piece you dox, you show number plates, you talk about the complex where this person is living, blah, blah, blah. That's when it becomes a legal issue. That's when you realize that social media can become a dangerous place because you don't even really know when somebody is lying or when they're telling the truth. For most of us, this is what we're starting to see from social media. Now we're looking at how social media reflects or impacts us as a society. Now I've talked about this in many of my videos of unpopular opinions, candid with cats, um, older men having relationships with young children, right? Things like this should be shown, yes, because we need to know dangerous men in our society, absolutely. But then you have the young kids who are 16, 17. As I record this, this morning I saw a video of a young girl who was uh, talking about how her boyfriend of four years, this young girl is in high school, so she's probably 16, 17, 18 at most. Her boyfriend of four years bought her an Apple iPhone 15. I can't even talk. An Apple iPhone 15. And now any sensible person in their mind is thinking, wait a minute, boyfriend of four years, Apple iPhone 15, four years, and she's done content pieces where she's sitting in this man's car and this man looks like he's driving a Mercedes and all of this. And what social media immediately did was find this man. And, 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 and by all accounts, find this man because she's young and she's underage. They can say in South Africa that the legal age of consent is 16, but she is still a minor. Do you understand? She is still a minor. She's not an adult. She's, yeah, if, yeah, if. So, so then it's things like that where, yes, you can expose people who are doing wrong things. That's fantastic. 
that's great in terms of the social media space but then you have the inf the the adverse of it right then you have the young girls who are talking about how my man did this for me my man did this for me and she's 16 and you're thinking the only way a man can buy you a bag that is 40,000 rand at 16, that man is not 16. You are 16, but that man is not 16. And they go onto social media, these young girls, and they talk about, I, I wanna date older guys. I love older guys. I am not gonna date somebody who is working. I am not gonna this, this, this. And this is the life that you can get if you date a guy like this. Do you see the imagery? Do you see the message that this is projecting to somebody or a young girl who may be watching this and being highly influenced and easily influenced into social norms and societal pressures because they now want this and they're thinking this is the only way to be in a good relationship where they get access to all of these kinds of things, right? So they deliberately put all this content online and make it seem like it's okay. This is where social media becomes dangerous as well. They make it seem like it's okay when it isn't. And we all know that it isn't. Social media, look at it in the mental health space, right? You have a lot of people propping up. You have a lot of life coaches propping up. You have a lot of motivational speakers propping up. You don't know anything about these people, apart from the fact that they speak well. They speak really well, but when you listen to what they say, a lot of them, it's like, uh, yeah, mm, 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 mm. right? If you have that self-awareness and if you have that, 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 that notion of thinking, of literally critically thinking about something, you can tell that, ah, ah, no, that, no, that's not the correct message that you should be projecting, especially about mental health online. It's great if you are somebody who is struggling with mental health and you go onto social media and you see somebody who's struggling with the same thing as you, depression, bipolar disorder, this, 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 and they are documenting their lives and this makes you feel seen and this makes you feel included and this makes you, that's when social media works really well because then you don't feel like you are different. You don't feel like nobody will ever understand you. You don't feel like you are ostracized from society or you don't feel like the black sheep of society because then you realize that ha ah, there are more people that are like this it's not just me it's not just me that's when social media works really really well but the adverse of it is there's a lot of crooks and con artists in the guise of coaches and therapists and all of this and when you critically listen to what they say or watch what they say with a critical eye you're like mm, yeah no no that's that ain't right that that just doesn't sound right right you know what i'm saying so i think that's when you need to look at social media from a critical perspective moving on to what you guys said okay moving on to what you guys said i really feel like this video is going to be in two parts and I feel like maybe we need to leave the second part of this video to addressing what some of you guys have said. So I will leave that one there for now. But let's look at relationships. Let's look at what social media has shown us of what relationships are supposed to look like. Social media is really, really good at making you feel bad about your life bad about the life that you're living. Social media can make you feel like you are not living a great life, like you could be having a better life, like this is the type of relationship you should have. This is the type of friendship you should have. This is the type of uh, life you should be living, blah, blah, blah. And this is when life is being lived well, if you're living your life like this.
if you have access to these kinds of things, if you wear these kinds of branded clothing, if you are happy and smiling, and people forget that social media a lot of the time is a highlight reel. So what somebody is putting up on their social media in terms of um, their life and their lifestyle and the things that they are seeing or, or the life that they are living, the things that they are showing you, their branded stuff, it's a highlight reel. They want you to see that, right? They're not showing you the rest of their day. They're not showing you what's happening behind closed doors. They're not showing you the real status of their relationship. You are seeing that, oh my God, my man took me out to this place and my man did this for me and he bought me this and he did this. And girl, this is a high value man because this is a da 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 and da 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 because they will talk. Of course they will talk. But the reality is we are not seeing what's happening behind closed doors. And it's crazy because then a lot of them will come out and actually speak about when I was married, this is what I was showing you. But in actual fact, this is what was happening behind closed doors. We've had celebrities come out and, you know, we see them with their partners online, loving it, living it up, all of this, blah, blah, blah. Until when the relationship breaks down, then you actually see what was happening behind closed doors. Then they feel compelled to speak about things like abuse and to speak about things like uh, being ill-treated in the relationship to not only warn their, their fans and all of that, but now they're actually exposing the truth of what we didn't see behind closed doors when we saw the bags and we saw the, the nice vacations and all of that, what we actually didn't see. Because we didn't see the behind the scenes, we look at that life and we think that's the life we should aspire to live. We think that's the life that I want for myself. More than, at, more, more than anything, people who live quieter lifestyles, people who just go to work, come home, people who just don't show their lives on social media, right, and live it normally and all of this, it's almost like that life is seen as boring. Let me give you an example with me, okay? I have been told once or twice in my videos and my vlogs of me being at home and living the quiet life that I naturally live, generally. I've always lived it even prior to being, come, uh, to being a content creator. I was called boring because I wasn't showing the, 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 the bags that I have. I've got designer bags, I don't show them. When I go out, I'll only maybe use one because I feel very, but that's a me thing, right? I feel some type of way about using my designer bags, especially when I'm around and about and all of this. When I go on holiday, if I travel overseas, whatever, I'm more inclined to pull out my designer bags. Don't even ask me why I do that, I'm, I'm weird, okay? But. Because people want to see the designer bags. People want to see you going out with your friends and living it up and having cocktails and traveling all, all over the world. This is what people want to see, that a life where you're just at home and living your life at home is often seen as boring. Oh, this is boring. And a lot of the time, social media content creators end up doing things that they really don't want to do. No, 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 they probably do want to do it because they want the views and the likes and the follows, right? But they end up doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Borrowing money, borrowing branded things, lying on social media about the cars that they drive and all of this blah, 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 because of the likes and the views and the follows. And adversely, how it impacts somebody else is that they feel like this is the standard that I need to match if I want to live a good life. Right? But then there's a dissemination of lies and projection of things that aren't true and all of this which negatively impacts the people that are watching it. Right? I haven't even looked at my notes. I think I've done pretty well for this. I think I've done pretty well, okay? So I think we need to be aware. I think what, what happens here is we need to be aware of how social media can negatively impact us as much as it is positively impacting a lot of people, a lot of businesses, a lot of people in terms of mental health and mental health awareness. And it's, it, it has its positive effects, 
but I think it's all up to you and how you consume social media on a daily basis. If something is making you feel bad, why are you consuming it? If you are constantly watching a social media content creator that makes you feel like you are less than, that makes you feel like you have nothing, you have no money, that makes you feel poor, that makes you feel bad about yourself, your life, your body, your face, your teeth, whatever it may be, why are you watching them? So a lot of self-awareness comes into play here, right? Social media for me personally, initially when I started, I felt has a lot of negativity towards older content creators. I'm older. A lot of content creators that we are content creating without you in the space are in their mid twenties, right? Late twenties. I'm in my mid thirties. I'm proud of it. I don't have a problem. But one of the things that I have said online is that why must you bring it to somebody's age when you want to attack somebody because they are saying something that you do not agree with or you feel attacked by whatever it is that I am saying to you. Why must you then bring it back to my age? I was actually feeling for my wire here. <laughs> Why must you bring it back to age? So ageism is a really big thing on social media as well. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Before I go into part two, I would love to hear your thoughts about what you think about social media is it positive is it negative what are your thoughts in between all of this i will be adding in video footage and all of this so that we can engage and talk about it a little bit more i hope you guys enjoyed this first installment of candid with cat social media is it toxic is it not is it bad is it good let's talk about it what has social media done for society and if you enjoyed this video please give it a like subscribe follow the channel, follow, join the membership space. Thank you so much as always for choosing me over and over again. Let's get into part two. I will see you on part two. Until the next one, sayonara.